Do you remember when that came out of what was it, 4chan or something? Um, they said, Hey, Halloween is coming out. This is, you know, maybe 2019 or earlier, you know, it was before the uh, COVID 9 11 nonsense. And they said, um, because they said, Look, Halloween is coming up. So you can wear a mask and they can't see who you are, right? So it's before the COVID nonsense. <laughs> but uh, they said, do some, uh, take some, some posters and write them up and say it's okay to be white and put them, post them everywhere at the university and watch what happens. And boy, it really hit the fan. They hated that. It's not okay to be white. It's like, really? It's not okay to be white? So that's been around for a while. Uh, that's kind of the basis. Yeah, it's okay to be white signs appear in schools and cities across the U.S. And they were so upset about it. And um, mainstream media wrote what, yeah, there it is, 4chan chat room. Uh, what an outrage it was to put that kind of stuff up. That was 2017. Thanks for finding that, Travis. 2017. And um, <clears throat> so that was an outrage. But that message has been, they've been pushing that message now for six years, and it's pretty much been accepted by the black community. So Rasmussen does a poll, and they found that uh, 26% of blacks, they said, is it okay to be white? 26% of blacks said no. 21% were not sure. So you're looking at a combined 47% that don't know or disagree that it's okay to be white. And so he talked about that. But the way that he talked about it was in a way to invite controversy, I believe. I think Scott Adams is doing it deliberately. But, you know, if you live by controversy, you will die. Diversity, inclusivity, and equity, you will die that way uh, by controversy. And that's what is happening to him right now. And, and everything that he had to say was really stoking this race war. You know, that is to say that it's not okay to be white. And that is incredibly racist, but they want that. And now the people who are canceling him want that as well. But again, he doesn't offer any solution for this. And there is a solution. You know, how do we correct this? How do we stop the public? First of all, we stop the public funding of these racist institutions, the colleges that are doing this. Everybody knows this going back, going back 2017 for chance saying, do this on a college campus. And it's coming from there. Uh, CRT has now come about since then, but that is what the institutions are for. They're institutions to fester and to push racism. It's like Bill Ayers and his white skin privilege that he started doing after he wasn't getting anywhere blowing up buildings and blowing up uh, police officers. So he decided to go into education and they were, you know, at the very beginning pushing white skin privilege because he wasn't getting any traction with the old fashioned Marxist class warfare and economics, he decided he would go with class warfare based on skin color. And that's what this truly is. So we need to stop funding, publicly funding these organizations. If people want to push this kind of racism, let them pay for it themselves instead of forcing us to foot the bill to uh, you know, create this kind of hatred. But the real answer is not going to be found in any political commentary. It's not going to be found by clutching your pearls and saying, isn't this horrible what they've been doing for years and years and years? Yeah, again, it was nothing new that he had to say. But um, uh, now he's being his cartoon, which I never thought was funny or insightful. Dil Dilbert is now being canceled everywhere. And, and Scott Adams has been on the side of Trump, but he's not been on the side of freedom, liberty, conservative government, or even common sense. The guy is absolutely clueless. He was the one. That, you know, right at the very beginning, it's getting harder and harder to tell these freedom lovers from sociopaths, right? At the beginning of the lockdown. And he's been there ever since. He doesn't have any solutions to anything. And uh, so he's, he puts this out. This is how he responded. A and listen to what a contradictory paradox this is. He says, everyone should be treated as an individual. Okay, fine. Leave it at that. Oh, but he's not finished yet. You should also avoid any group that doesn't respect you, even if there are people within that group who are fine. So you, everybody should be treated as an individual, but you should avoid particular groups. Again, the guy is absolutely incapable of any logical thought or expression, and he has no solutions. 
That's not a solution. How do you counter this lie of racism? Well, you point out to everybody that the biblical understanding from the Old Testament to the New Testament, you know, Judeo to Judeo-Christian, throughout, it has an understanding that we're all descended from Adam, and then even after that, from Noah. And it even says in the New Testament, uh, God has created all nations of one blood. The distinction in the Bible is between nations, tongues, and tribes. It's not between skin color. And what are we talking about there? Well, we're talking about politics, national borders. We're talking about uh, languages, tongues, and we're talking about tribes. We're talking about customs. The Common Man. They created Common Core to dumb down our children. They created Common Past to track and control us. Their Commons Project to make sure the commoners own nothing and the communist future. They see the common man as simple, unsophisticated, ordinary. But each of us has worth and dignity created in the image of God. That is what we have in common. That is what they want to take away. Their most powerful weapons are isolation, deception, intimidation. They desire to know everything about us while they hide everything from us. It's time to turn that around and expose what they want to hide. Please share the information and links you'll find at thedavidnightshow.com. Thank you for listening. Thank you for sharing. If you can't support us financially, please keep us in your prayers. thedavidnightshow.com.